Hello everyone, this is Satyajit Patnaik and welcome back to my channel and today's topic is going to be time series forecasting in Power BI. Now, I think most of you have already seen some of my videos. I, I do have an end-to-end -end video on Power BI which explains from scratch till intermediate level and definitely will have a very good understanding if you go through all kind of videos. Apart from that, recently I have also provided two end-to-end -end projects and I'm also working on a couple of more projects. And coming on to time series forecasting, I think most of you might already be knowing about time series forecasting. It's nothing but when you deal with the time series data, when you have a date column and you have some other column, basically we have to forecast. For example, you are forecasting weather. Let's say you have data for the last 12 months, you have the weather data from the last 12 months and you want to forecast it for the next one month or two months. So any kind of data which has a time parameter in it is basically called as time series data. The, the analysis which has been done on time series data is called as time series analysis. And if you are doing some kind of forecasting, some kind of predictive modeling, and that basically, called, that basically is termed as time series forecasting. Now, I do have an end-to-end -end time series forecasting video using Python. I will probably leave the link in the description below or probably somewhere here you can be able to see the video. If you don't know anything about time series forecasting, probably go to this uh, video and check it out. In case you don't, uh, uh, in case you want to have a quick look at time series forecasting, I also have a blog on time series forecasting. I will again leave this link in the description as well so that you can go through. It's a very old blog, three years back, but I think it will give you a good understanding of what time series forecasting is all about. Okay. Now, when it comes to algorithms, there are a lot of algorithms inside uh, to analyze time series data. Uh, the traditional algorithms are ARIMA. There are different versions of ARIMA, AR, MA, ARMA, ARIMA, SARIMA, SARIMA, S, ARIMA, whatever people call it uh, in different names. We do have Holtz-Winter linear method, Holtz-Winter exponential smoothing. Uh, there are a lot more GARCH methods and uh, LSTMs, Facebook profit. There are a lot of traditional methods or you can say there are a lot of algorithms which deals with time series data. And uh, of course, using Python, we have done a good amount of learning previously. Today's video is more focused on Power BI, but how to do the time series forecasting in Power BI. Now, in this particular video, I'm not going to talk about the Python part. It's entirely the end-to-end the -end time series forecasting is going to be done in the Power BI itself. Okay, but I will also give you a hint about what's the back-end algorithm which is being used. Okay, I'll talk about that. So for this particular video, I have used air passengers data. In case you don't know about air passengers data, it's a very commonly used data set. Uh, maybe number of passengers data is there from January 1949 till December 1960. So almost 12 years of data, 11 years of data, sorry, 11 years of data. So as you, as you, as you already seen, I have just created a, the text box here and here I have just created a line chart okay in the line chart I have used month as the axis which is my x-axis and values is my passengers which is my this particular thing and this is a cumulative box okay right? cumulative window uh, cumulative uh, data now we already have data from 1949 Jan till December 1960 now, what if we want predictions for the next six months? Okay. Now, what we need to do here is click on this, uh, click on this graph, go to the formatting options. In the formatting options, you will see all kinds of formatting which you need. If you need labels, if you need the color to be changed, all these things can be done here. Okay. When it comes to the field section, whenever you are changing your fields or putting your fields, everything is done here. Apart from these two, we also have a third category, which is your analytics. So click on your analytics. Once your analytics is done, you can see there are a lot more things here. Trend line. What is trend line? It will basically tell you what's the trend. If it is an upward trend or a downward trend. 
but in this video you can just explore everything whatever options are possible what whatever options are available to you you can just explore that so that's that's the beauty of power you can simply explore explore a lot of things so you can see these are the two major things which we will be using for this video we are focusing on the forecast part we will have another video on animal as well okay so what is forecast forecast you can see there are there is an option of add so if i click on add you can see here there are some parameters which is visible which is forecast length forecast length basically means how much steps are you going to forecast now this is a monthly data so let's say we want to do 6 months of forecast so i want it to be 6 6 points simple okay ignore last what is ignore last ignore last i'll talk about that in in couple of minutes but let's just skip at the moment ignore last is null confidence interval you can see first of all the data is not visible to me i'll just click on uh, one second i'll just click on this and i'll change it to let's say okay now you can see the forecast is visible coming back to the confidence interval confidence means with 95% confidence we can tell that the final prediction is going to be within the range of this 95% confidence if i increase the confidence the 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 width of the predictions will decrease now when i say predictions that means upper bound and the lower bound so it's basically giving you a forecast and it also gives you a forecast upper and a forecast lower okay let's say i'm making it 75% you can see the data will decrease like the, you can see the width has decreased right now if i talk about 99% the width is increasing that means with a 99% confidence we can tell that this data point is going to fall under 537 and 419 that's the importance that's the meaning of this confidence interval so we'll keep it as 95% okay i'll click on apply this is how the predictions looks like now if you want to do a uh, actual versus predicted let's say uh, let's say just imagine you have 10 years of data and of course when you are predicting the 11th year you will already have this kind of data right like this but how can you match it up how can you check that whether your predictions are correct or not so what we usually do is we instead of 12 months uh, 12 years of data Uh, whatever the example was let's say 10 years of data let's say i had 10 years of data what i will do is i will try to do a forecast on the last year itself so that i also have the actual data actual 10th year data and i also have the predicted 10th year data so that we can match it up so this is the meaning of ignore last let's say i want to match it with 12 months last 12 months of data as well so 12 and forecast length what forecast length 12 plus 6 let's say 18 so what does this mean that this means just explaining you again let's say i have data from jan 1949 till december 1960 okay if i keep the ignore last as null and give a forecast length as 6 that means i'm predicting for jan 1961 till june 1961 as simple as that okay but i am not able to match up i am not able to compare whether my predictions are correct or not right so what we do instead of this i will change my ignore last as 12 and forecast as 18 so here the predictions will be from jan 1960 till june 1961 so here from jan 1960 till december 1960 you already have the actual values so you can compare it how the output is so 18 and 12 and just click on apply now you can see see here the actual value is 622 and the forecast value is 641 so you can see the predictions have started from 1960 january Uh, this this data is a very simple data that's the reason you are able to predict it very accurately just try around this method with different other data sets and you will try to understand what the problem is all about but if you ask me can we sir 
check the algorithm or the code which is being used we just have to deep dive and check into the power ki internal code but uh, i i don't have an idea about what's being used in the internal like in the back end but i do have some intuition about it when i was going through the power bi uh, uh, blogs i got to know that see see let's just go through this and try to understand forecasting in power bi power view is based on established sort of methods of time series prediction called exponential smoothing so they are using exponential smoothing technique okay and you can see for power view in excel we provided two versions of exponential smoothing one for seasonal data and one for non seasonal data so if you learn about time series data you will get to know more about it there are multiple components under time series there are components like seasonality trend cyclic behavior uh, lot lot more uh, a lot more components as well so based on your input data it identifies the data as a seasonal data or non seasonal data and accordingly it uses some of the exponential smoothing technique okay if you want to go through this particular blog i will leave this link in the description below so that you can check it out so that's it for today's video guys uh, i do have an anomaly detection uh, small tutorial as well so i'll just release it and yeah i'm currently working on a lot more end to end power bi projects end to end interview questions and answer series a lot more things are coming uh, i mean are in plan I will be releasing one by one very soon. That's it from my side, guys, for this particular video. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe among your friends. And uh, that's it. Thank you. Stay safe. And in case you have any requirements, let's say I you want me to work on any particular project or anything, just write down in the comment section so that I will check and I will immediately work on it. Okay. I already have ten to twelve requests which people have made from the previous videos. I'm already working on it, and probably in next one month I'll release everything. Okay, thank you everyone. Thank you. Bye, and that's it. Bye.